Welcome to Red Dirt Cryptid Investigations. Today we're going to be talking about my 2017 Subaru Outback, why I chose it, and the build that I have. The first thing you're going to notice is there's no lift. I learned my lesson back when I was running Jeeps about how that can affect your alignment and everything else, and I wanted to keep my gas mileage as good as possible. I picked up this bull bar, put my off-road lights on. I'm planning on putting some more on there soon. The most important upgrade that you can make to your vehicle if you're gonna go off-road is some good tires. These are the Pirelli Scorpion ATs. Pretty decent. I also invested in some aluminum skid plates. I think these things have saved me a couple of times already. They do make a hell of a lot of noise when you hit something with them. I bolted on a class 3 receiver in the wiring and I have this little step in the back that uh, I used to get in and out whenever I'm sleeping in there. And of course you got to have a cargo basket to throw all your crap in. I upgraded to the larger size battery. And I installed my own wiring for a dedicated hot port at the back of my center console so that I could access there. And I use these straps that fold in and out from underneath my hood to tie down my canoe or my kayak. Pretty handy. Okay, here's a quick look at um, my auxiliary battery setup. Ghetto fab. So what I've got is a deep cycle marine grade battery that I use for my trolling motor. And it's in here, it's in this box. And I will take this box out and I will put it in my canoe and I will use it for my trolling motor. As you can see, the mess, I mean, this is kind of how it lives. I've got charging cords and I, I found this thing on uh, Amazon cheap. You can see it's got USB ports and uh, 12 volt plugs. I've got, uh, you know, you can turn them off and on. There's. This was the cellar right there. It had a voltage meter on there. I can turn things off, power them back up. Uh, inside is a, uh, there's a, there's a manual reset breaker here. I got a toggle switch somewhere that turns the lights off and on, but I very seldom ever use those. And I have these terminals sticking out that go to a cord that plugs into this hot all the time battery port that is linked directly to my battery via a uh, nice fuse. So this is kind of what I use to run my air conditioner, my refrigerator, and I use it to read a recharging station for everything from my Bailfang radio, um, and just charging phones and devices. Now I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, oh, that's not safe. That's not proper. That's not OEM. That's not this, that's not tether. I agree, but it's been working. It's been doing exactly what I want it to do. It's never tripped a breaker. It's never ran my battery down. Uh, of course, there's some personal responsibility that kind of goes along with it. Common sense. Um, if you're going to be out on location for multiple days, you're going to have to start your vehicle and let it run and recharge. And you are going to have to use a little common sense. Uh, there have been a few nights when I was running the air conditioner that uh, I decided I was just going to go ahead and reach down and disconnect while I was sleeping in here. Um, but I was just going to disconnect that auxiliary battery just in case it did pull a, pull a drain on my primary battery under the hood. And, uh, but to be honest with you, I've never tested it extremely to its limits, but it's been working fine and I've never really had any problems and it's done everything that I have ever wanted it to do. I've also got a little auxiliary inverter that I use to run my fan. And that 
runs a lot. And I also use it to sometimes run, uh, you know, the lighting. I've got some string lights that I'll string up. I know it's very hip of me, but hey, you know, sometimes you just, uh, you want to kind of light up your area. I do that a lot when I'm camping in, uh, you know, civilized campgrounds, you know. Anyway, that's, that's the electrical system. I do have a 12 volt plug in in the back here at the back of the hatch. I very seldom ever use it. Um, kind of, kind of worthless. It shuts off with the ignition. So what good is it? Anyway. Okay. Here's step two, I guess you'd say of, uh, my build. I cut this board out. I painted it black so it didn't stand out. That was, uh, truly cosmetic. And what I do is I pull the seat forward when it's time to go to bed. I lean the seat forward and uh, I will slide this thing in here. And uh, it's just a piece of wood. I do have this attached to here. And uh, sometimes it's actually upside down, but sometimes I adjust it and I will hook this onto these bars here so that I can get a little bit of an angle to get my pitch right. But I don't have to do that very often. And if you park well and get your angle right, you'll never have to worry about that. Here's what it looks like whenever I go to gear it up. I move both seats forward, slide that board in there. Sometimes I will hook this up, get the right angle on this thing, and bam. Uh, that leaves me with a little storage under there, you know. I just, I just stuff stuff in there. The next thing I do is I throw this uh, tumbling mat that I acquired and I uh, throw it in there. That's kind of like my base layer for cushion. <laughs> then uh, I actually throw in this little mattress. This little mattress, you can choose to believe me or not. Um, I actually found it on the side of the highway. It is a toddler crib mattress. And what I did was, is I just snatched it up disinfected the thing I told I, yes I found it on the side of the highway yes, you, I told you this was a ghetto build as you can see there's the mattress I took some memory foam stuck it on top slide it forward I know what you're thinking oh that's so short well my head will be at the end my ass will be right about in the middle and I've got an answer for the foot situation for my feet and the comfort thereof I have my ghetto fabulous lawn furniture pad which is also good for taking out and sitting on and doing other miscellaneous stuff uh, I think I got this off of a uh, Facebook marketplace for like five bucks and it came with three others but that's it right there that's pretty much how I sleep in here I'm six foot one and I sleep in here uh, very comfortably and I'm pretty fat, you know, I'm a big guy. I'm well over 300 pounds and I've got plenty of room. Now, truth is it moves around a little bit in there, but hey, everything does. The truth is, is it's it works and that's the main thing and uh, I don't have hardly anything invested in it. This is my fan. Um, I got this from Walmart and it was like 12 bucks. I did modify it a little bit. I put the, uh, I drilled some holes in it, ran that, uh, oh, what is this? It's for uh, ceiling fans and stuff. And uh, I will hang it up from the ceiling in there. That way it's blowing on me. Yes, it is 115 volts. I do not use the battery portion of it, but that's what the inverter is for. And it was cheap. The price was right. And I hippied it up a little bit. It just keeps working. So, my air conditioning. It's one of those Jeff Foxworthy specials. Icy Breeze, okay? It does take a battery. I opted not to purchase the $100 battery because I have a bigger one. One of the things they, they don't show you very well is the inside. Now, basically what it does is there's a pump up in here somewhere that sucks the cold water from the bottom and you're supposed to have like x amount it's supposed to be you know at least a couple inches deep 
with with water and ice and it sucks it up runs it through this heat exchanger and blows it out through the vent and then pumps the water back down in um, you can pull this bad boy out usually when i'm doing it it's pointing right at me and uh it actually works pretty good um i mean it's not you know it's not going to turn your uh your vehicle into a an ice box or anything but uh i've been pretty impressed with the thing now the air that comes one thing that i was i'm an air conditioning guy so i was concerned it's like well here's the supply air right that's being delivered and where's the return air come from and the return air actually comes from right here it sucks air through this hole goes down in through the cooler and it blows it back out so that does uh, melt your ice a little bit faster but hey you can't have it all right um, the cooler actually works pretty good um, if you if it's like i don't know 95 degrees um there was one night i was in there sleeping in this thing it was 95 degrees and it kept me cool but it went through you're going to use at least eight pounds of ice a day or a night to try to stay cool with this bad boy and refrigerate your food it works pretty good in the back of my little outback but how well it would actually work in like a full-size van or like a suburban or something like that that's something that i cannot answer but for the most part uh, it's a little noisy but uh, everybody knows a little white noise in the background is acceptable most of the time. Um, but the thing, it, it does make some noise. But for the most part, it's I, I'm very grateful for this thing. And uh, it enables me to get out and go look for Sasquatch when it's hot. And actually be able to sleep at night instead of just laying there sweating like I used to. So, anyway, icy breeze. I have no complaints. Money well spent. This is my luxury item right here. It's my zero gravity lounge chair. It's got a little fold out table that you can store some stuff on. Half the time I don't fool with it. This thing is heavy. Uh, it doesn't fit in the back of my Subaru very well, but it is comfortable. And if the weather is nice and there's a nice breeze, I will go to sleep in this thing and sleep outdoors, assuming the mosquitoes aren't that bad. I usually uh, take my Glock and you know, set my Glock in my lap and go to sleep. This thing is really nice, but it is awkward to transport. It is heavy, but then again, if it's going to hold me, it has to be sturdy. Anyway, I love this thing. Uh, my wife cries when I take it with She's always like, can't you take another one? <laughs> I'm like, can't you go buy one for yourself? Now, this is my gearbox. I don't remember where I got this, but I bought it years ago to put in my service truck. It's got a lock on it, but I never use it. As you can see, I keep all my cooking stuff and miscellaneous camping gear in here. I've got a bucket that's uh, got all of my cooking stuff for the most part. I can just grab that bucket and go most of the time. The bucket's also handy when you're cleaning stuff up. Um, I make coffee, of course, in my little French press. And there's my coffee cup. And every trip I go out, I stash or I pack this thing with whatever it is. There's a difference between what I'm gonna carry in this thing in the winter time and what I'm gonna carry in the summer. And it goes right there. Sometimes when I'm camping somewhere for a while, I'll actually take it out and I'll set it on the ground and I'll use it as a work table. And underneath my storage box is this. Now, I just kind of grab that with one hand, but this is uh, where I do all my cooking. Making of coffee, stuff like that. I'll pull this bad boy out um, and I'll usually just make my coffee and 
get my little camp stove out on it. It's super ghetto, super cheap. Cost me nothing, it's made out of scrap wood. And that's it. I mean, it's got a customized deal to stick a spatula or something in. Um, it's not that fancy. I painted it black so it matched everything else. And sometimes, you know, if I'm cooking, I'll take it out and set it on the ground or whatever, whatever. So, slides back in, out of the way. And of course, what, uh, what Subaru Outback would be complete without a hippie blanket. I use this every time I go out, no matter what, because it's more of a fashion state. <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys. <laughs> no, I very seldom ever take that thing out. Um, the truth is the bedding is going to depend. Uh, the kind of bedding that you take out. I've got heavy sleeping bags in the winter time and I've got a really nice uh, down half sleeping bag. Doesn't have a zipper, it's custom made from my fat butt. And I've got, most of the time I take this uh, little down throw thing that I, uh, that I uh, take out with me on a regular basis. I think I got it from Amazon. It was like 50 bucks. Okay, so this is some of the other stuff. This is my high quality down sleeping bag. Um, I got that from a guy off of Etsy. Can't remember it, I'm not gonna unpack it. Um, this is my hammock. It's got a bug net on it. It's kind of a cheaper one, but it does real well. I have no complaints. This is my tarp that I have. Um, that is not, it is not a Magellan tarp. That is a Magellan stuff sack that got repurposed to hold my tarp. And same with the, this is not a air mattress, although the bag originally was. I repurposed this stuff sack. That has got a down throw blanket in it that I use. This is my cheap Amazon air compressor. I usually don't air down, but if I get stuck, I might. And this is something that Jeff Hatfield gave me. Um, I use the hell out of this thing now. I'll spread it on the ground, lay down, take a nap. A lot of times I will spread it out right here so when I'm getting in and out of my vehicle, um, I don't drag extra crap off. I'll kick my shoes off on that mat, crawl in, go to sleep. And uh, of course, I always take my day pack my i need a new day pack this thing has gone through hell uh, it's filthy uh, one of the zippers is giving me crap um, it's 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 done all right um it's old i hate getting a new day pack though i mean good gosh but yeah this thing is uh this thing i'm gonna have to break down spend some money but uh, a day pack is one of those things that you don't really go cheap on you have to have exactly what you want or you're going to be miserable no way around it anyway um that's my setup i got a few suction cups there's my deal that i clip into there whatever you call that I got Sasquatch stuff everywhere because that's what I'm doing. I'm always looking for Sasquatch. That's why I go out. Uh, sometimes I go out and hit swimming holes, but most of the time I am out looking for cryptids. Anyway, that's my rig. Um, got a little step in there. That's really nice. Um, I mean, I try not to permanently modify too much. Uh, you know, I, I want to be able to just take everything out, throw it in the garage, and I'm back to normal commuting. So I try to keep everything as light as possible. I have a, uh, uh, probably can't see it very well, but I've actually got one of those uh, homemade cabinet things with a sliding drawer. That I kept in there, but the thing was massive, man. It weighed a ton, and I just, that wasn't, I mean, when you start loading these uh, these little four cylinders down, I mean, the gas mileage goes to crap, and hell, you might as well have bought a truck. 
So anyway, I do everything I can to keep everything as light as possible. Somewhere in there, I'll have a duffel bag with some clothes and some toothpaste. So that's really about it. Keep it simple, stupid. Thanks for hanging out with us for a little while. Please consider liking and subscribing my page. I would appreciate it greatly.